All right. Good morning. Welcome to beginner intermediate Pilates. We're going to do a nice essential workout today. So kind of covering all movement patterns in a traditional classic workout. Um, we want to move the spine in all directions. So we want to do flexion, extension, rotation, and side bending, which you'll always see in my classes. And we want to address scapular stability at some point in the workout. And we want to address hip mobility. Uh, and we're going to finish with some standing posture because I think it's really important that we come back to standing. And we do some weight bearing on the hands, weight bearing on the feet. So we're actually going to start nice and relaxed. We're just going to come down to the mat on our backs. And I want you to put your hands, one at the chest and one at the lower belly as you lie down. You can have your knees bent and your feet flat. If it feels more comfortable for you to have your legs flat down, just often when we have the legs flat down, we kind of go into a hyperextension. So it's probably better for most of us to have uh, the knees bent. Now I'm just gonna coach you from here so I'm not lying on my back turning my head sideways, uh, which can be quite uncomfortable, okay? So as you get yourself settled, make sure you have your little head pillow. You don't wanna have a pillow that forces your head forward either. Some of you I've seen on the screen and you're using kind of traditional pillows. I would suggest that you use just a little hand towel, like maybe a dish towel or something, and you just roll it up a little bit, just enough to give you the support of your normal little head block if you don't have a head block. Okay, if you don't normally use a headlock, then you shouldn't be using a headlock here, okay? So we're gonna have the hand at the sternum and the palm of the hand in the center of the belly. And I want you to really feel that palm of your hand on the hard plate of your sternum. So really kind of feel that texture. We're gonna take a nice breath in through the nose and I want you to feel the hands inflating and rising. And then as you exhale through the mouth, I want you to feel your hands deflating. Okay, so there's an inflation as we breathe in through the nose and a deflation as you exhale out. Okay, so we want to feel like the, the chest and the belly are rising together and they fall together. Now often what happens is we raise the chest and then we don't fall in the chest and our belly stays kind of stuck. Okay, so if you find that you're not breathing that well through your hand at the bottom, then try and focus your mind there. Maybe even put both hands there and breathe into your belly more. And as you exhale, feel the belly fall as if it has a weight to it. Okay, so imagine all your organs are falling into the back of your pelvis. So, huh. I also find a sighing breath is really helpful. Ah, so maybe see on the next few, if you can let that air out and make a sighing sound. Ah. See if you can kind of let it out to where there's a little bit of pause in the breath. So inflate, little pause, deflate. Ah little pause. Inflate, little pause, deflate. Try not to let yourself go lightheaded if you're doing that, just soften how much you're breathing, okay? But we really want that expansion of the chest and the deflation of the belly. Okay, I want you to bring your hands here so the palms of the hands are at your hip bones, okay? You're kind of making a little triangle with your hands. So I want to find that bony hard at the front of my hip bone. So I'm gonna put the palms there and then just rest my hands down, my thumbs across. It makes kind of a little triangle. Okay, now I want you to breathe in and tilt your triangle down. So you're going into your six. So if you imagine there's a little marble here, you're rolling your marble down towards your fingertips. Okay, and then as you exhale, you're gonna roll your marble towards your thumbs. Inhale, roll your imaginary marble down towards your fingertips. Almost imagine it going down through your legs to the floor and exhale to roll back up. Now this happens from your breathing and your movement pattern of your pelvis. Okay, so what I want you to try and avoid is clenching, tensing, squeezing. 
See if you can just create that rocking and imagining that marble rolling beautifully down as you breathe in and up as you breathe out. Okay, so you should feel the texture of your sacrum changing on the mat, a little bit more space and then a bit more length as you roll. But we're trying to minimize the outer muscles working. Okay, so we don't want to be using the hamstrings or the abdominal squeezing. It's, it's quite soft in our outer layers. And what we should start to feel is a nice connection to our inner layers, a lengthening as we go down and a hollowing as we go back up. And then find that nice midpoint. Now keep the hands here at the hip bones. And I want you to feel as if one hip bone is just rising a little bit towards your hand and the other hip bone is dropping back towards the mat. Now at the back of there is our little PSIS, our posterior crest of the pelvis, okay? So we're letting one side of the pelvis melt into the mat and the other side feels a little bit lighter, okay? So inhale as you come back to the middle, Exhale as you feel the one side going more into your hand and the other side going down towards the floor. Again, this isn't a very forceful position. Okay, if we imagine the two halves being separate, one half becomes a little bit heavier. Maybe you think of your organs being heavier on that side and the other side is a little bit lighter. That's all I really want you to feel in your imagery, a feeling of heaviness on one side, and a feeling of light on the other side, okay? So that one pelvic half is going up higher than the other, okay? And the feeling on the floor should be of a, a melting sensation, okay? So we're melting the pelvis down. Now when I melt the pelvis down, my leg also goes into my hip a little bit. Just feels like it's sinking into the socket of my pelvis. And then I come back to the middle, and then I'm sinking and melting the other half and sinking my leg down into the hip crease. I just want you to be conscious of the muscles that are really trying to work on the outside of you. Maybe your inner thighs are clenching or your bum is trying to push. Just soften that and see if you can bring your mind back to the feeling of heaviness in the pelvis. Really simple, coming across the sacrum, Maybe you can even feel that tipping point where you come back and you feel the sacrum on the mat and then you roll around that sacrum to one side. Okay, just do one more wherever you are. And then come back to center. Now you're going to place your marble quite heavy in the middle of your pelvis. And it's sinking down into the floor a little bit. So maybe the back of the pelvis just spreads out a little bit on the mat. And we're gonna roll around in a clock face. So you're gonna roll your marble around the circumference of your pelvic bowl. And there will be some feeling in your feet. So there's a little bit of pushing and gliding and giving and taking in the feet. Check out how much those outer muscles are working for you. Could you soften those and bring your mind's eye to the feeling of rolling that marble around and feeling heavy at each point around that clock on the floor. Let's go the other direction, breathing in. So you might find inhaling as the pelvis rolls towards the bottom and exhale as it rolls around the top half is quite helpful. If your marble was rolling around your clock face, would you be missing any numbers on that clock? So really see in your mind's eye all the numbers of the clock as you come around. Beautifully rolling. Nicely, nicely. Okay, let's settle back into the center. And I just want you to lift your pelvis up and then let it kind of drop heavy back in that middle zone. Now we're just going to focus on a single leg. So just pick whichever leg comes into your mind first. And I want you to feel the ball in the socket. So I just want you to feel the rotational movement 
of your leg. I want you to almost strip your leg away from any muscles that are overworking. Okay, so sometimes we're very sticky in the front of the leg. We might be sticky in the back of the leg. So just kind of go think groin side. And I'm just feeling that ball rolling in the socket. Okay, and then just do a few on the other side, rolling the ball in the socket. And just see if it's a little bit easier. Is it a bit stickier on this side? Are you gripping? Are you holding on? Could you let go? Maybe the movement becomes a little bit smaller. Maybe you're feeling a little bit more deep in the hip. That's good. So you want it to feel deep in the hip. And then return it back down. Now take that first leg up. And I just want you to hold gently on the thigh. And just do a little bit of internal, external rotation of the thigh bump. So I'm rotating the thigh outwardly and inwardly. And just feel that ball and socket. If you can imagine it doing a rotation in your hip gently. I'm not forcefully doing it and I can really sense that my outer spiral is much better than my inner spiral. Okay, so I can feel that I'm stiff going this way around. Do the same thing on the other side. So just rotating in and out. I'm just feeling, you can hold your hands wherever it feels good. I'm just kind of playing with really feeling the cylinder of my leg rotating. Out and in. Okay. Good, so we feel that movement. Go back to the first leg. Now I'm gonna turn the leg inwardly so my foot goes more towards the outside, okay? So my thigh bone is rotating towards, uh, rotating towards the middle. And then I just want you to do the femur arc in that slight internal rotation, okay? So my thigh is turned in towards the midline. My foot is slightly turned away from the midline. And I'm just feeling how that is. And then I'm going to turn the leg out and lower and lift. So we're just kind of feeling, hmm, that feels a bit sticky. That doesn't feel so nice. Or, Ooh, that feels a bit nicer when it's turned out. Okay, now come back to the middle and see how that ball and socket works really beautifully when it's parallel. Okay, this is how we walk. You can start to feel the other leg pressing into the floor a little bit, giving some sensation there. Okay, so let's do that same thing on the other side. So turn it inward. Yep, so my thigh bone is rotating towards the midline. Do a little bit of femur arcs. Doesn't have to necessarily go all the way down to the floor. I just want you to feel if there's any clunking. Does it feel uncomfortable? Turn it out. Yeah, so it doesn't want to turn out as well on this side. It's a bit sticky over here. Okay, and then back to parallel. Ah, it's almost like a sweet relief when it goes into parallel. Feel a little bit of press into that bottom line. There should be no crunching and clunking. If there is, you've got to lessen the range of movement. Okay, so now feel heavy through your pelvis. Float both legs up. Notice how I'm slightly flexed in the hips. So I'm not completely 90. I want to feel the back of my pelvis really weighted on the mat. Okay, so now let's femur arc here. Now we found hopefully that nice middle zone where the leg works from. Exhale as you arc. Inhale to return. The top leg is coming a little bit towards me as the other leg drops away. You decide how far it goes. Let's check your breathing. Exhale as the belly deflating. Inhale, inflating. Exhale, deflating. So you might need to slow down. Let's do one more on each side. And then lower down all the way and give yourself a nice little stretch out on the mat so the legs go long. Okay, you're gonna grab your flex band. We're gonna uh, do the little double up of the band. If you've got a very hard, uh, tight band, then you might not need to do it, so just, just see. Okay, and then we're gonna get it shoulder distance apart, just a little bit wider than shoulder distance. Okay, we're gonna do our protraction, retraction. So we're gonna glide the shoulder blades wide on the back as we breathe in. 
We're going to let the shoulder blades come back towards the mat as the collarbone is open. That's a breath out. And I'm just slightly pulling out of the band, ever so slight. Okay, so I'm slightly widening the band apart, breathing in. The shoulder blades come apart, and I can feel more of my spine on the mat. And then as I exhale, the collarbones widen, and I'm widening the band, and I'm bringing the shoulder blades towards the mat. Now I can feel less of my spine. Okay, inhale, protract. Exhale, widen, and retract. And then find neutral. So you should feel that the shoulder blades are kind of flat and wide across uh, with your spine. Now, take the arms overhead. Remember we did a little bit of turning the palms into each other as they go overhead. Make sure you have nothing in the way here. And then bring it back down towards your thighs. The palms are now facing down. So I'm going to start the movement, make sure I'm nice and neutral. As the arms go overhead, I'm going to turn the palms into each other a little bit. Good. And then come back. Now as the arms go overhead, my shoulder blades are going to glide up a little bit. So they're not pulling down. They're free to slide up my back. And then they naturally kind of rotate as my arms go back up. If it feels too much with the band, you can do it without the band. But there's something nice about having just that little bit of tension there as my arms go overhead. I haven't placed my, my balls in the right place. And back. Okay, you go where you can. So I don't want you to go into pain or discomfort. And maybe see if you can let those shoulder blades glide up. Feel like your arms are coming from the back of your pelvis, not the top of your shoulder. Okay, I'm gonna take those arms back up to here. We're gonna go back to our tabletop position. So my band is kind of sitting like just a bit over top of my knees, okay? Now, I want you to take your arms overhead as you do your single leg. Inhale back. Exhale, other side. Good, then we're gonna do doubles. Now I'm gonna keep those legs nice and slow, really close to me, and I'm checking when my pelvis wants to come out of neutral, okay, which is pretty soon. Okay, so that's not gonna be a big movement. Okay, single, and back. Other side, and back, doubles. So notice how my feet drop and I keep it really close to me and I'm very conscious that my arms can't go overhead too much because then I lose my core. And come back. Let's do two more of those double ones. So I'm feeling heavy in my pelvis, feeling wide through my uh, shoulder blades. Feeling my sternum pushing back into the mat, my ribs going back into the mat. So those bottom ribs connecting, you can see I don't go that far. Lots of core, keeping your neutral. And release, nice one. Now just open your band up. And we're gonna just take the hands down here. I've got my thumb and first finger. And I've got the band just across my uh, shins. I've still got the main uh, tabletop. And I'm just gonna try and bounce my arms a little bit here, like the 100 position. Now I want to feel like the back of the arm is the emphasis, not the front of the arm pushing, but the back of the arm almost pulling. Okay, it's very subtle, but the back of the arm pulls down. So little pulses. Now I want you to try and go in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, breathe in, two, three, four, breathe out, two, three, four, breathe in, two, three, four, breathe out, two, three, four. Now you're going to remember that because we're going to add the upper body in a second. So if you've got a soft ball, if you've got a roller, something that can help assist you go into a, a flexion pattern and an extension pattern, please use that. If you don't have anything like that, you could even roll a towel up just so that we can go into a little bit of extension over the towel. 
a pillow, maybe. Um, but hopefully you have one, one of e one of either, either the bowl or the roller. Okay. So I'm going to go to my mid back, my roll line, my shoulder blade, bottom of the shoulder blade. I'm going to interlace the hands behind the head, and then I'm just going to bring that head back into the hands. My pelvis is slightly tucked under, so it's slightly 12 because I want that back surface of the pelvis to be on that. I don't want to be down by the tail side, okay? So I want you to take a big breath into your back. And then as you exhale, I want you to think of the front of you slowly lengthening. So from the pubic bone up through the navel to the rib cage. Now I'm not losing my transverse muscles. So my 25% contraction is still intact. Okay, so I'm not letting go of everything. I'm, my outer layers are stretching. My inner layers are supporting. Okay, then I take a breath in to start coming back up and a breath out and if you want you can throw your arms forward a little bit just to help you kind of come up a little bit but then i like the hands back behind the head here so breath in my inner layers are supporting me my outer layers are stretching okay so the rectus abdominis some of the obliques my pecs my neck muscles but I don't want to just drop my head back. So I'm lengthening with support. Take a breath in. Now the back of my body is lengthening. The fascia of my back is giving to bring me back up. So it doesn't need to be super forceful. Okay, if you are just doing this on the floor, you have no props, it's the same idea. So we want to lengthen that front body to bring you back and lengthen the back body to bring you back up, okay? Lengthen the front body, break from the pubic bone, up through your abdominal wall, through the rib cage, to the sternum, to the head, and then the back body lengthens to bring you back up. Let's do that one more time. Lengthen the front body, Extend beautifully over and all the way back up. Nice one. Now, while we're here, you can't do this with the roller, so only if you have the soft ball. If you don't have the soft ball, just do this on the floor, okay? So you're going to lie on your front and we're going to do our extension pattern the other way. Same thing. As I go over, I'm lengthening the front of uh, the back of me. As I go into extension, I'm lengthening the front. And sometimes it's nice if you're already down on the floor, come back up for a second. Sometimes it's nice to do this um, in kneeling for a second. So if I can feel kind of the fascia at the back of me like this, okay, like it's a big elastic band, then as I go forward, I'm kind of stretching that elastic forward, right? And then as I go back up, I'm putting this between my, <laughs> you probably can't see it because I've got black on. Let me just take this off for a second. Okay, so I've got now my band here. So when I go up, I'm stretching and lengthening this front of me. Okay, so I want you to think of the, the band, so we're, kind of stretching the back of you to go forward a little bit, but I want to still keep my deep abdominals on. So I'm not just hanging over. So my deep belly is on. And then I'm thinking of my elastic band here, lengthening to bring me up, okay? Back of the body, right from the back of the hamstrings up. But I've got my 25% contraction for my deep core. So my outer muscles are lengthening. And then through the inner thighs, yes, yeah, so I'm thinking inner thighs, deep abdominals, and now I'm lengthening the outer layer of my front body to come into extension, okay? Then come back to center, remember that little pump of the arm. So we're gonna do this here. You can have your toes tucked, or you can have them flat, whichever feels better. So I'm gonna pump the arms, and I'm thinking, Backwards, 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 okay? Back of my arm, 
is connecting rather than the front of the arm pulling. So it's back, 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 back. In, two, three, four, breathe out. Two, three, four. Now this is quite nice in this position because if you don't have stability, your pelvis is gonna move all over the place. So can we keep the inner thigh strong as we breathe in for four and out for four? In, two, three, four, out, two, three, four. Pushing back, 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 and it's not this, okay? It's not a floppy arm, it's a really strong arm. The more the arm can pump from the top of the shoulder, the back of the shoulder, the more challenge you'll have on your pelvis. In, two, three, four, out, two, three, four. One more time, three, four, out, two, three, four. Okay, so we're doing that in different planes so that when we come to it, um, and it's kind of a classic little fun exercise, but I'll do it so it's nice for you. Okay, so over the ball or just on the floor, if you're doing it that way. If you're on the ball, W arms, I think we can probably do W arms either way. Okay, so over the ball, I'm thinking of lengthening that back body. Okay, so I'm thinking of my band attached from the, at least the sacrum all the way over to the crown of the head. So I'm lengthening that over. I want my deep abdominals to gently be lifted. So let them go, then draw them in all the way. So notice if you push too hard, then those outer layers are too rigid, right? So I'm just gonna pull up a little bit my deep belly. Take a breath in, keeping that 25% contraction. I'm gonna roll the ball or feel like I'm rolling a ball with my sternum. Let the eyes drift forward and up a little bit. Eyes, nose, chin, chest. And I'm feeling, do I feel length in the front tissue of my body? If I'm holding too strong, then it's not gonna move. If I don't hold anything, then all I do is compress into my low back. So there needs to be that nice little level in the middle. Okay, and then I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna think of my flex band back here, even if I'm on the mat. Inhale, exhale, feel the deep abdominals supporting you. And then the outer layer of your muscles are elongating to move you into the extension, right up through your rib cage, into the kind of the sternocleidal muscles here of your neck. Okay, if you feel compressed, your belly's probably dropped or you've gone too far. And you need to think about length going out and up. Let me do it without the ball for those of you that don't have the ball. So nice breath in. Okay, I want my deep belly to gently come up. My legs long, but not tense. Okay, so feel, if you find that you're tensing your quads, soften and focus your mind from your pubic bone up through your navel, the chest opening, everything in the front of you is lengthening. So you might not go very high, Okay, and I went a little bit too high, it felt compressive. So I'm just gonna try and really see if I can lengthen more internally for myself. Eyes, nose, chin, chest, and then come back down. Okay, so we'll do two more of those, but I want you guys just to get that concept that actually we're just lengthening that front body. That's all we're doing to get ourselves into those extended patterns, okay? So using your breath, nice little, Light connection, check your legs. Could they soften? Because that's those outer ones. If I tense my legs, I'm going to tense my shoulders, I'm going to tense my hips. Okay, so I want to be connected through the legs so they're reaching down the mat, but not in a tension way. Okay, so those outer muscles need to be free to move here and release back down. Okay, now we're going to try and do the dart here, whether you're on the ball or on the floor. So we're gonna have our arms just dropped here. So you just gotta get the ball in the right place so it's not cutting off your wing pipe here. Okay, now we're gonna rotate the upper arm. So my collarbones are gonna go wide, 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 wide. And I'm gonna see if I can rotate and retract my shoulders. And then I'm just gonna lengthen the spine. So I'm not really trying to go up, I'm trying to go more forward. The arms could come a little bit wider if you like. They could even go kind of here. I like turning maybe the, palm, um, the palms, so the thumbs go up. Whatever helps you to get the shoulder blades to come together. Check your belly, 
and then fold back over. Inhale. So if you're on the floor, you're not going to be going very high. I want the collarbones to feel stretched out, your arms to rotate, and then you're lengthening just a little bit. So in this position, it's more like my upper body is going forward. I'm still thinking of the elastic from my pubic bone and through my sternum and to my center of the head a little bit. And then release back down. Okay, and we're kind of thinking of that external rotation of the arm bones. Okay, so I'm spiraling that upper arm outwards. I'm opening the collarbones. I'm feeling that little bit of retraction through the shoulder blades. You might feel the back of the arms working in that position, but make sure your ribs and your belly don't pop out. Okay, so you want those bottom ribs to really be connected there. Okay? And then fold back over. Okay, come into a shell stretch for a moment. So we're going to try and do this little hundred position. So I'm going to go back to my little band around the shin. Okay, so that's option one, how we had it before. Option two is having the feet out, okay? And I wouldn't have them too low here, so you're gonna pump the arms from there. Now that's gonna be a little bit more challenging because the lever's longer, okay? So choose your adventure. Um, if you're not that strong in tabletop, I would stay with bent knees, okay? If your core is pretty strong and you can maintain tabletop, then uh, go to the longer version, okay? So I'm gonna take a little breath in. We're gonna roll the head and we're gonna look up through the legs. I'm gonna go in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, in, and down, okay? Now, if your head does not like that, that's totally fine. You're just gonna do the breathing, the pumping of the arms. What you might be able to do if you're not lifting your head is to go like this, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, in, two, three, four. That's quite nice, actually. We might do that together. In, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four. So I'm lifting up as I breathe out. In, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, in, two, three, four. Just keep the head down if it's not happy doing that. In, two, three, four, out, two, three, four. One more time, three, four, press, two, three, four, and back in, and then release. Huh. Yes, I like the feet and the strap doing that better. Um, especially if you're keeping your head down. Uh, that would be okay, but you can't really press your legs out in that version. So just as a little side note to everyone, if they watch this again, to put their feet into the straps. Righto. Let's sit up and we'll do a little bit of some spine rotation work. So if you have something to sit on that elevates you up a little bit, maybe a few little pillows, little books, um, if you're not happy and cross-legged, then you can go into um, a kneeling position. That's cool. So we're just going to do a little spine twist, and then we're going to come up to kneeling where it's a little bit more, more functional. Okay? So take a nice breath in. Just get yourself into a lifted position. And if you are cross-legged, we want to try and soften around the hip crease, okay? So often when we sit up, we're kind of really using these hip flexors to sit up, okay? So if you can, that's why if you elevate your bum a little bit, your legs can soften and you can get into a little bit more of a comfortable position. Worst comes to worst, sit on a hard back chair, okay? So sit on your dining room chair or something. And I want you to see if you can let go of the hips and lengthen up through the center of you, okay? So let go of the hips, kind of pulling to try and sit you up. And maybe you slump for a moment, but then you slowly let your deep abdominals 
kind of lift to send you up. So it's again that feeling of kind of the belly coming in, the chest going out and expanding. Okay, now we're going to start to feel a little rotation coming up through the middle of you, and then it's going to start to rotate the upper back. Okay, so for now I'm just keeping my arms down and I'm just trying to get almost the, the chest to turn. So think of, um, sorry, I think we're all ladies today. Uh, your boobs turning, okay? So you've got a little light on your chest, you're turning, <laughs> you're turning them to each side. And just have a little feel that you're not doing it forcefully, so you're only doing where your elastic is telling you to go, okay? So if you find you kind of go and then you're really pulling it there, don't do that. So I'm just kind of checking how far my body can go. Okay, so it's not very far. Now I'm going to let my pelvis move a little bit. So if you're in kneeling, you're not, this isn't going to be so much, it's more sitting. Okay, so if I go to the left, my right sit bone is slightly going to go forward. And that gives me a little bit more give, okay? And if I go to the right, my left sit bone, so the opposite sit bone goes slightly forward. Okay, notice if that's a little bit better. So allowing a little bit of movement in the pelvis, which is how we walk. It's not a lot of movement, but there is a, a, a little bit of movement in the hips. Okay, now we're going to add the arms. So arms outstretch. One is going to pull back into retraction. One is going to go forward into protraction. And I'm really wanting you guys to think about your shoulder blades, not your arms. So think what your shoulder blades are doing on your back. Okay, are you feeling that nice little gliding action of the shoulder blades on your back? Okay, how is it moving now? Now that we add a little bit of the pelvis and a little bit of the arm. So now suddenly my little rotation where I wasn't using anything has become quite a lot bigger. Okay, whether you're on knees or sitting, that should feel a little bit better to do. All right. Lovely. Let's come back to that in kneeling in a minute because some of you have obviously been on kneeling. Let's come to our sitting posture with our band. So come off of your block and we're just going to do our little roll downs, but we're going to do roll downs with a little bit of rotation because roll downs in the middle doesn't really feel that nice. Um, and you might decide to do this without the band, okay? You might find more freedom without. I'm going to see how I feel today as well, and I might ditch the band, okay? So what I want you to do is to just pull just a little bit to one side, pull the other side, pull through the middle and see if you can sit up a little bit taller, okay? So you're going to roll back a little bit, pull to one side, so I'm, I'm kind of rolling off of my sit bones, pull to the other side, and then I'm going to pull with both and sit up nice and tall. Okay, so now I'm on my sit bones. So I roll off of my sit bones, pull back. So my sit bones are now pointing towards my heels, pull back, and then pull together to sit up. Okay? Now, when I pull to the left this time, I'm gonna let my right leg push. So I'm pulling on the left, pushing on my right leg. And you might get the sacrum down and then come back up, okay? Then I'm gonna pull my right arm, push my left leg. And I'm just gonna roll, try and get my sacrum to touch the floor if I can. And then come back up, pull with both, sit up nice and tall. Okay, so I pull the left arm, I'm pushing the right leg. And I'm just rolling my bottom under and seeing if I can touch down my sacrum. See if I can get that sacrum to touch down. Now I got it there, come back up. Rotate the right, push the left leg, push the left leg, roll the pelvis, roll the pelvis, and come back. Good, okay, so we want to try and get that sacrum down and then pull. Okay, so you can stay with the band if you like. I'm going to be a little bit more free now. And I'm going to roll 
and see if I can go all the way down and come back up. So I'm using my hand a little bit, using my leg. And I'm, I'm kind of rotating my hips a little bit. So I'm gonna roll down to the one side and roll back up. So you might need the band still, see how you feel. So I'm going rotating to the left. I'm pushing my right leg away. Rotating to the right, pushing my left leg away. One more on each side, wherever you are, okay? So you're still with your band. We have that nice little push, that nice little roll down, trying to get that sacrum to the floor. One more. Push with the opposite side, roll the pelvis, and back up nicely to the top. Beauty. Okay. Come up to your split knee length, with or without the band, it doesn't matter, you're still going to do the same thing, the band is quite nice to feel, we've done this before, and I think we actually did it last time. Okay. If you need some cushioning underneath your bottom leg, please pop a little cushion under there. Give yourself lots of support. If you're really not happy on your uh, knees, you can actually do this in a little standing split stance so where the, the knees are slightly bent. Okay, I know some of you that have some uh, not so happy knees when you're on your knee. Okay, so we've got a little tension in the band here. I've got it around my shoulder blades. And then we're going to do what we did in the spine twist, where we have one arm going forward, one arm going back, and seeing how much I can rotate. However, now that I've got that one leg forward, there's more likelihood that my pelvis is going to twist. So I want to stay really lifted and try almost to drag the front heel back as I'm rotating. Okay? So if you're opting for that little standing posture, then I want to drag that front heel back as I'm doing it and almost drag the back foot forward. So it's giving me that really rooted stability. One more on each side. And then come back to center and then release change legs. Okay? So if you want a little bit more of kind of the stretchy feeling, in your hip, then you can stay on the knees. If you want more of the stability challenge and you don't like your knees being on the floor, then come up to that higher one, okay? Tilt the pelvis, drive that front heel, whether you're standing or kneeling, rotate, rotate. Can you do it just from your chest, thoracic, shoulder blades gliding around the ribs? Nice deep belly on, nice lifted posture. Three, two, and a one. And release back, nice one. Okay, so let's, before we kind of go into a little side uh, position, I'd like you to come up to standing. Okay, standing is important. So we wanna get weight bearing on the feet. Um, so we've done lots of rotation, we've done flexion, we've done extension. We haven't done side bending, but I'm going to use the band in the side bend. We want weight bearing on the hands, which we haven't done yet, and we want weight bearing on the feet, okay? So we're going to kind of do a little combination of weight bearing on the feet and weight bearing on the hands. So get a nice wide foot position, okay? The wider your base of support, the more balance you're going to have. Also, if the arches of the foot feel slightly lifted, you're going to have more core control. If the arches of your foot are slumped and rolled in, you're going to have this little feeling, okay? So we're spreading the feet. We're feeling as if there's a little lift underneath the arch of the foot, okay? We're feeling as if the thigh bones are lifting off of your knees, but your shins are going down. So your shins are going down, your thighs are coming up, okay? You're gonna feel space around your hips. You're gonna feel the belly retracting. So just check where your posture is. You should have your weight back in your heels, 
okay? I feel my navel retracting, my rib cage coming back, my sternum coming back, my head. Now we're gonna shift the weight to the one side, let's go to the left, it's not a big shift. And then I'm gonna shift the leg, uh, my weight to my right, okay? So I'm really just taking the pelvis across. I'm not going so far that it's like really relaxed, so I'm just shifting. And I feel like I'm pushing the mat apart with both of my kind of outer edges of my foot. So imagine if you've got like a really sticky mat like I do, that I'm pushing the legs apart. So I can feel a little bit in my abductors. And then I'm just shifting the weight across, shifting the weight across. Now, when I get that weight across, I'm gonna stand into the floor a little bit more so that I can lift my leg out to the side. It's like I'm pushing the carpet out or my mat out, but just lift that leg a little bit. Okay, then I'm gonna come back to center. Feel like both legs are pushing out the mat, I go to the other side. Lift out of the leg, spread the foot. Can you lift the roof of your mouth? Just a little lift, okay? Pressing the mat apart. So I'm pushing my, uh, my outer legs outwards, going over, lift, so a little bit higher, little lift. Now this leg feels like it's light, okay? So it's not lifting that far. Press the mat apart, go over, lift, roof of the mouth lifts, arch of the foot lifts, good. One more on each side, come to the middle. Press your mat apart, over to the one side, lift, and float, nice. And over, press the mat apart, have that moment in the middle so it activates those uh, glutes, and over. Woo! Okay, and that should work into the sides of the hip just a little bit, have a little wiggle out. Okay, we're gonna come to the um, bottom of the mat, and we're just gonna do a little rise up onto the toes, so a little toe bridge. Now I only want your heels rising, where you stay on your big toe pad. So if you go up higher and you start going to your baby toes, then your heels don't go that high, okay? I want you to feel as if your big toes are almost rolling into each other, okay? If you're really losing your balance, you can, well, we don't really want to think because we're gonna roll down onto the floor in a second, okay? So we're gonna do a little rise of the heels where you're on your big toes, reach the heels back, in space, okay? It's almost like you're pulling your foot longer. Rise up, big toes, pull the heels back. It's all about kind of finding your own little resistance in yourself. Rise up, big toes, almost as if the baby toes are gonna lift. Check here what you're feeling. Reach the heels back. Now you can just bend the knees a little bit. You might need a little kind of bounce for a second. Okay, so I can feel my calves, the back of the knees are going forward and my hips are going back. So my heels are going back, my hips are going back, my back of the knees going forward a little bit. Okay, now we're gonna tip forward with a neutral back and I'm gonna lengthen the back of the legs a little bit. And I'm gonna come back to kind of my little squat and stand back up. So bend the heels back, the hips back, the back of the knees forward. So I don't want to just do knees forward, right? That's not a squat. Heels back, hips back, back of the knees forward. Then I'm going to almost keep the shape of my spine length of the legs. My bum goes up, so I'm getting a little bit of a hamstring stretch. Then come back to the squat, come back up. Heels back, hips back, back of the knees forward. Put your hands wherever. Okay, hinge at the hips, deep belly on, never lose that 25%, and I'm just lengthening my legs a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna bend the knees from here, see if I can even come to fingertips and walking down to all fours. Okay, now my hands are my feet, right? So I wanna spread out my hands and have the arch of the hand not touching the floor. So if that center of the hand touches the floor, that's when we compress the wrist. So can you feel that center of the hand almost lifting? Can you feel your belly lifting? Just a little bit up so it's not hanging down. Okay, so belly lifting, lengthening out. 
Okay, now I'm gonna do what I did with my legs. I'm gonna separate the mat apart a little bit, like I'm pushing it wide. Push it wide and lift the knees. And release. Now make sure your back is in hunch, your shoulders feel happy on your back, your belly is lifted. So arch of the hand, belly lifts, press the mat apart, cover the knees. Inhale. Release, okay? Arch of the hand lifts, belly lifts, press the mat apart, lift. So it's the abductors of our arm girdle. One more time. Arch of the hand lifts, belly lifts, press the mat apart, lift the knees, and release. Now from there, you're gonna take the hips up, and you're gonna walk yourself back, as best you can. If you have to turn out, that's fine. And feel that little hamstring stretch. Feel the little squat. Come back up. Feel the little toe bridge. Okay, so we're going to do this little combo. So toe bridge up. We raise the heels only as far as we get the big toe on the ground. Woo! That was very bad. So we're going to do that again. Roll up and make some of you wobbled as well. I'm going to reach the heels back, the hips back, my back of the knees forward. I'm going to hinge and lengthen the back of the legs. Check in, my deep belly is on. Feel that nice hamstring stretch, and I'm going to bend down, reach my hands to where I can. Okay, coming out. As soon as my hands hit the floor, they're spreading out. The arch of the hand is lifting. The lift in my belly. I'm pressing the mat apart, cover the knees. Inhale back down. Arch of the hand lifts, lengthen through your spine, and press the mat apart. Okay, feel those lats connect. One more. And back. One more time, coming up. Walk the hands back to the feet. See if you can find that little hamstring stretch, lengthening yourself out, maybe hands at the hips, little squat, and back up all the way. Nice. Okay, our final thing, if you've got the band, really, really helpful to use. Um, if you don't, just do the same pattern. We're gonna come back to the knees. Sorry, those of you with, uh, with knee stuff going on. Um, you could potentially do this standing up and just have the band underneath your foot and then just go into a little side bend, but it's quite nice here if you can manage it. Okay, so make sure your foot is anchoring the band. Your hand is up where your band is just the start of tension. So I don't want to be going and getting it up there, okay? So there, just the start of tension is there, okay? Shoulders nice and happy on the back, check in your belly. Now we're gonna arc ourselves over. We're gonna lengthen now the side of the body. So just like we did with the front and the back of the body. And then I'm going to lift the under waist to come back up. So I, my side fascia goes from the side of my leg through the side of my hips into the side of the waist up into the lats, into the triceps, and then into my hand. So I'm wanting the band to mimic what my sides are doing. And back up, okay? So I want you to feel your band mimics what your fascia is doing on the side of you. Lengthening out, good. The head is really reaching out in space. The roof of the mouth is lifting. Our deep belly is on. Let's do one more this way. And up. Okay, so I'm lifting through the center. I never want to lose that central lift. If your fingertips don't go all the way down, that's fine. And make that your last one. Coming up. Nice. Hopefully you got that four times if you were fiddling about a little bit. Finish your four on that side before you change to the other side. I can see some of you uh, adjusting stuff. Okay, now of course, if your arm is just not happy, number one, check is it in the right place. 
Is it too far back? Is it hyper elevated? Can you settle it? Maybe the elbow is slightly bent. If it's really not happy, then you can do it here. You just might need to choke up the band a little bit and then come over there. It doesn't work as well. So if you can get that nice extension, that lift, and then it's the body that takes you over. It's not the arm. The arm is just decoration. My body takes me over and lift back up. So you might find that one side is better. And over, lift, lengthen. Yeah, feel how your deep abdominals are. Are they supporting you as you go? And over. I think that's three. <laughs> okay, one more time. Lift, make sure there's not too much tension. Feel the band is mimicking what your side fascia is doing. And all the way up. I'm gonna finish with a little, uh, little dance. Awesome. And then just stand yourself up. Okay, so consider again to be healthy. We want to have flexion, extension, rotation. Do this with me. Side bending. But it shouldn't be floppy. Okay, so as we go forward, there's a little lift through the front as we go forward. As we go back, there's a lift through the front to go back. As we go into a rotation, there's a lift through the front to rotate. Lift through the, it's not really the front, it's the deep, deep guys. Lift through the deep guys. Same thing to the side, I lift through the deep guys, over. Lift through the deep abdominals, over. So all of our spine movements should have that core control, okay? So let's remember that when we are doing our practices. Awesome guys, thank you. And we'll resume our shoulder series maybe next week. See how we uh, how we get.